one, two, three, and here we go. My name is Anthony Barocas with Aiva Communications, and today I want to show you version three of my dual motion camera setup because it's taken a little bit to get here, and I think this uh, information can help a couple people. So let's go take a look at that. <laughs> Yes, I am producing this live with inserts and titles. My name is Anthony Brokas again. I'm the chief gearhead of Aiba Communications, and I am holding the iPad that is doing the production while I'm doing it, and I have two more cameras. I'm using the selfie camera on the iPad to talk to you, but I have over here, I have another camera. Is it this one? That's this one. That's an SE, iPhone SE, and then over here, I have an iPhone 5S, still running good. And I don't know. Does it look better? Yeah, they kind of look the same. And uh, what I wanted to show you was the fact that I can move the camera around. I can tilt up and down. You can see the fact that I'm holding the iPad and the microphone in my hand. And that is the 5S. And here is the SE, also able to move. And the goal with this is so that I can cover an event. I put the tripod in the front of the room it's just a thin metal stand and all of this is above the eye line and I'm trying to get all of this clutter to a minimum now when I say a minimum there's always gonna have to be wires unless you're doing I'm doing a really short event 30 minutes or so then I don't need to plug extra power cables in and I could just go with the phones and the um, motors Galileo motors by themselves but if I'm gonna go for an hour or so and the event I'm coming up this week is gonna be likely hour and a half and I need to have stuff set up beforehand, so two hours easy. So I need to have power. So I have an external 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank with four outputs powering both motors and both cameras. So that was the key to get all of this clutter down to a minimum before I had a pouch and I had various mounts and arms and stuff like that and it was just getting too much so I bought this bracket I bought this bracket uh, this is an impact light stand and that was really cool except it's the mounting points are too close so what I had to do was I had to swing one camera off one way and one camera off the other way and to get them to both look at the stage I had to use the selfie cam from one camera because it's this way and the other camera I had to use the main camera not really a big issue but the problem I encountered was because these are both motion heads the motion is different when you have one camera this way and one camera this way so I kept getting confused going left and right and on the other one it's right and left no it's left and right I mean again I'm getting confused so I needed to redevelop it to version three where both cameras are oriented the same way so that motion is how it's supposed to be and I'm using the better camera on the back of the camera. So let me go to this and then swap the cameras so I can show you that this is what we have going on here. We have the motor with the uh, camera here, four outputs from the battery and then power in the motor and then the cable coming underneath so it's not in front of the lens underneath and then with a right angle into here. I've seen other um, adapters where it's a, it's a little fold over plug and then a sticky and then a cable. That could be good too. Uh, this is working for right now because visually from a distance there's not a lot of clutter and this is going to remember this is going to be up in the air. You're going to I'm going to have to have wires. There's no way around the fact that I have to have wires and the key thing is this has to be able to let the camera head move. So if I bring this down and go to the SE in my camera view, you'll see, oh no, up here, that the fact that it has to move means that those cables need to be free so that I can move that camera around and get different things. So, you know, different speakers are one side. I can go between the far speaker and the close speaker. And then over here, I've got the podium. And then if all of a sudden there's two people at the podium where I need to move that camera, I can quickly 
rotate that around, or if I want to go between two speakers, I can point it over there and have two cameras pointing in the sort of the same direction. Although, realistically, I think if that camera points down, not there, points down excessively in that direction, it's going to see, here we go, preview here, it's going to see the power. So maybe in the next version, what I'm going to do is the power is going to be arranged behind both of the motors. And uh, let me go back to this. The power is going to be arranged behind both of the motors and then sideways so that they are, there's nothing in, in, in front of the two cameras and they can pan around and, and see everything. And if I need to, of course, I can always take one of the cameras and say, hey, you, uh, there's something going on in the audience. Oop, oh, it's over here. I can spin that all the way around this way and get the audience. And of course, I can uh, dismiss the activation thing and spin that around that way and get the audience. So th these, this is a very flexible setup. I'm you know, kind of inclined to even add a third camera to this setup, pointed at the audience, which would let me get different reaction shots. But then, of course, I run into the power issue, which is, you know, this is going to get four outputs. They don't make batteries with six outputs. Uh, I was lucky to find this one. <laughs> so this enables me to get all this set up. Now, like I said, I, before I had, let me swap this around, do, 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 go back to here, go back to reverse. All right, so before, like I said, I had this one, and this one was kind of compact. Um, and then when I had the motors on top and the mount on the bottom, it was really challenging the pack because it was really tall, um, even with the motors collapsed. Now, it's no Osmo, which is even taller. You know, I haven't moved to those just because they're so big. And I can't imagine putting two of those on a stand in the front of the room to try and capture, you know, an event or three of those in the front of the room. The motors are just so well purpose built for exactly what this needs. Um, so I ended up flying them underneath. So the motors were on either side of the pole and that worked out really well. But because I need them further apart, uh, what I did here was, switch that around again. Um, I'm, I'm using a rail system. So I've got a cheese plate here that goes to a rail on this side, which goes up and then goes to a rail on that side and it goes up here. So I've got two rails connected to a cheese plate and it's kind of narrow, but you know, it's like I've got this level and then I get the cheese plate level and then I've got the battery level and then I've got the Osimo level and I'm working on a new mounting system that will put the light stand right into the centerpiece, which will come out and I'll have a foot. So the Osimo will sit at the same level as the top of the light stand on either side. And then other feet can come forward to rest the battery onto. So it's literally all on one level. And that's going to be really cool in terms of like just neatening this up even more because in terms of having a corporate event and being in front of people who could potentially hire you for future gigs having a nice neat package really does help so I just wanted to show off what I got going on here and this could potentially help people now the only downside is the Osimo uh, not the Osimo the Galileo Motors are discontinued they're like two years beyond uh, being supported and you know there's certain issues as the new OS comes out as the new iOS comes out and there's new updates that certain features are you know potentially going to stop working and that's sad because these are just so perfect for exactly what we need to do with Switcher Studio I, I kind of wish that there was a way to just contact the people that made these things and say, hey, listen, we got some money. Let us buy the IP off of you and let us update the software drivers for these things so that we can keep them going with Switcher Studio, make it really a Switcher Studio kind of product. Um, I wish there was a way to do that and you know, keep these things going and I'd buy up all of the extra ones that are on eBay. <laughs> so with that, uh, my name is Anthony Barocas with IEVA Communications. Quick look at my uh, dual motorized camera head setup for Switcher Studio. Thanks for watching. Oh, now I get pushes.